Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at what is the difference between ensemble patches and individual patches? When should you use one or the other? All of that kind of thing. So if you're a beginner, this is going to be perfect for you. Even if you might have been composing for a while, you might find some useful things in this. All right, so let's get straight to it. Okay, so here we are in Logic and let's get straight into it. So I'm going to check out, use Nucleus for this. So we have individual sections, for example, strings. Let's just start there, keep it nice and easy. In a traditional string section, you'll have different sections. You'll have violins, violas, celli, and basses, double basses. The best way to get the most realistic results in programming is having, the best way to make it sound realistic, I should say, is to use individual section patches like this. So using the violins, for example, and then the violas and everything like that. Now for sketching, if you're trying to sketch out a quick idea or if you don't have those kind of sections, then that's where full ensembles come in. So ensemble patches. Let's check this out. Strings full. Here we go. So here you have an ensemble patch like this, so you can play any chords you want. can play all the way higher up. Anything like that. To get more realism, you want to use the mod wheel, which is on my MIDI keyboard. Whatever MIDI keyboard you have will have it set to the mod wheel usually or some other fader, or you can just draw it in, in your sequencer, sorry, your uh, door as well. You can actually just draw it in. So in a sustained patch like this, you can actually just play whatever you want. You can play as many notes. So you can do anything like that, which is really awesome. And essentially what you have in an, uh, an, an ensemble patch like that, a full ensemble, is you have all the sections, like I mentioned, double basses, celli, violas, violins, all split up. So right at the bottom, you can hear that that's the double basses. And if we go up to the C, the next octave up. That's the celli. If we go up to the next octave from that, you can actually hear the blend of different string instruments there. If we go up there, you can hear violins, and violas, and I think celli. It's kind of all going a bit more left, because obviously as a traditional string section is seated, you have the violins on the left, then you have kind of the violas almost in the middle, but a little bit more to the right. And then you have celli on the right and basses on the right. Obviously it can change, you can vary it. That's just the kind of traditional layout. In an ensemble patch, it's all obviously blended together. So as you go higher and higher up the keyboard and in the range, you'll hear that it's also moving over to the left because that's just the seating. Bass is on the right, violin's on the left. And usually with an ensemble patch like this, obviously you're not gonna have like a legato, you might have polyphonic legato in some things, but for the most of the time, it's going to be things like sustained, spiccato, 
pizzicato, tremolo, all those kinds of articulations. So spiccato, you've got things like this. Tremolo. Really useful. So yeah, that's essentially what you have in an ensemble patch like that. It's really good. I really like this for getting ideas. So say like I'm just trying to create some sort of chord progression, uh, something like this. Now, here's the other thing. In sections, when you're just writing for one voice at a time, like the violins, for example, you can actually have one hand playing the part and then the other hand can be controlling the mod wheel to control how intense the player is playing or things like that. When you're playing an ensemble patch, you're using both hands usually because you're writing for like the full string section or brass or woodwinds or whatever. So you can't really use that at the same time. So I'm going to have to set it somewhere. So let's go something a little bit softer like that. So I would try and sketch out a part like this. All right, and then we have the individual sections. So for example, violins like this, you have articulations like legato. And you still have your sustains like this. One of the differences you'll see there though is that even if we go lower in the range of the violins, we're not having the violas or cellis introduced, it's just the violins playing. So that's quite a big thing that's useful about having individual sections as well, rather than just a full ensemble patch. And then you've got your spiccato across the full range as well. Pizzicato again across the whole range. And then tremolo again. So things like that. And that applies to all of the sections. We have violas, cellis, basses, whatever. That's the major difference for me, really. I would use ensemble patches for sketching because you have the whole thing. And especially if you're trying to figure out something like a chord progression, or if you, you know, you have your violins taking the melody and you have something in the celli, and then you just want an ensemble patch to just quickly create some kind of chord progression, and a nice bed underneath it. You can do that. You don't need legato for every single uh, instrument in that section, like the string section, for example. You'll be fine with just doing that. And as long as you have realistic legato for the melodies, it can be more believable in a way. So there's little tips like that that you can do with mock-ups. You don't need to have legato for every single section, especially if they're not like a feature, it's just a harmonic support. So you can use something like this. I still use individual sections and I still do use like legato articulations rather than just the sustains, even for the individual voices in chords. I just, that's just, I prefer to do that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll accent certain moments where I do want it to be like a very obvious legato transition. Overall, though, most of the time, ensemble patches are really good for 
sketching, like I said, mocking up things, just um, getting ideas, getting chord progressions down. And then your section patches is where you create the detail. Now, here's the thing for writing melodies. I still use legato patches like a celli legato, for example, like this one, because it's very uninspiring if you're trying to create something that has a very obvious legato in the melody and you're using a sustained patch. So I use a legato patch to write that up and, you know, get ideas that way. And then I have my ensemble patch for just getting chords or, you know, writing. Yeah, for example, so I'll, write, I'll sketch out the the melody and like the violins or celli. And then underneath that, I'll have the chords in like an ensemble patch. So that's a really useful thing to do with all of that as well. The other thing you can do is actually layer everything. So you can have all your sections. So say you have first violins doing the lead melody, then you have second violins, viola, celli, and basses doing the harmony. And you might have the celli, for example, doing like some sort of counter melody or something like that um, alongside the violins. And you've got it on both sides, the violins on the left and the celli on the right. It's quite a nice uh, sound. And um, underneath that, what you can do is actually for the harmonic side of it. So all the chord stuff that you've had the individual sections, like the second violins, viola, celli, and basses playing, you can actually double that up in the ensemble patch, just as one patch rather than split up into different tracks. You just have it on one track, one ensemble patch, and you have it all on there. And then that just makes it a little bit beefier sometimes if you're trying to go for a bigger sound. Now, Here's the thing, to sound epic, you don't need to layer and layer and layer. Sometimes that can actually do the opposite and you can actually just make it sounding just too undefined. Whereas when you have a smaller section and you have it detailed like that, it can sound more defined and sometimes more epic, quote unquote. So yeah, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But sometimes it is useful having the ensemble patch underneath like the normal sections and then you can just create a bit more warmth sometimes a bit more body because obviously an ensemble patch is a mixture of everything so it just it is it does sound bigger like a bigger section than the individual sections so that's what i sometimes do with en ensemble patches not a lot of time I, I think other people do that more often i personally don't do it a lot but that's that's fine you know so it's completely down to personal preference so i hope that was useful some of the audio demos and stuff like that i hope that's useful in some way and yeah let me know down below what you think. If you've got any questions, I'll happily get back to you when possible. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.